Hello everybody. A policy that's become very popular over the last 10 to 15 years or so is that of tradable pollution permits to reduce the level of pollution that there is in the world. Um, if you've got a question on this, what diagram do you draw? Well, I would go straight into the market for permits and how in that market we can show a market fairly being sold. To start with, all we need to draw is the market for permits. So this is not necessarily a market failure related diagram. So all we need to draw here is the price of permits and the quantity of permits. All right? That is the market we are focusing on here. You might have learned this is carbon credits uh, or carbon pricing. Uh, so they have various names to it. They all mean the same thing. So we're in the permit market. Okay? The government issues permits, so there is a fixed supply of permits, so we have to draw a perfectly inelastic supply curve, so vertical supply curve there, and that gives us the quantity. So the government decides the quantity of permits issued in an economy, and that should equal the socially optimum level of pollution, essentially, that's allowed in the economy. All right? So Q star... Uh, is the number of permits issued which should equal the socially optimum level of pollution that is socially designed in society. So the government sets that, you have to draw a vertical supply curve. The government decides that level, perfectly inelastic. There is a normal demand curve, normal downward sloping demand curve. As the price of permits is lower, there is a greater incentive to buy them. As the price goes up and up and up, there is more of an incentive not to buy them, but instead to invest in green technology, right? So what you're trying to show is that the government fixes the supply at Q star, which in theory is the socially optimum level. Where supply equals demand, there is a price of permits. So market-based solution, here is the market for permits working. And we get to the social optimum as long as the government has the perfect information of how many permits to issue and to get the cap right on pollution. Right. What's worth doing in your mind is, yes, learn this diagram, but have in your mind what you're trying to show. What you're trying to show is the socially optimum quantity. You want to show that the government can just kind of get the cap at the right level and um, issue permits appropriately. You want to show that. Okay, so that's number four. But you also want to show how this is a market-based solution and how really, apart from this initial government intervention, there is no more government intervention needed. So number five here, changes in market conditions, is also worth showing. And remember, with a pollution permit scheme, the beauty of this scheme, as opposed to this blank regulation, putting a cap on allowed emissions, is that this promotes more choice, right? The market works here, and producers have a choice. They can either buy permits, or they can invest in green technology and reduce pollution that way. Both options will reduce pollution, all right, uh, overall, but a firm will only do, make the choice based on what's cost effective, for that given firm. So if it's more cost effective to buy permits, then buy permits. If it's more cost effective to invest in green technology, invest in green technology and sell any spare permits you may have. All right? You can show that via number five here. So what I would do next is say, look, let's say that there is a huge demand for permits, maybe because the price is quite low, maybe because for many different firms, investing in green technology is just not cost viable. So then you might want to show a shift of demand to the right. Right? The quantity will stay exactly the same, it has to, because the government has fixed quantity Q star. There aren't any more permits out there. So what happens? The price goes up. The rationing function of the price mechanism is at work, and the price goes up to reflect the fact that these are becoming scarcer. Right? In your analysis, you can say, look, as demand shifts to the right from D1 to D2, the price goes up from P1 to P2, and that changes the incentive in this market. All of a sudden now, permits have become more expensive, the incentives are now really for more firms to switch towards investing in green technology because this is now more expensive relative to the other option. That's a nice idea, right? So if there's a change in market conditions, this is how uh, businesses may change their processes, may change their decision making. You might want to also add on this diagram what the government may do if the scheme is successful. What they may do over time is to reduce the number of permits in the market. So they might think that ah, look, this policy has been so successful, uh, we can actually try even further to reduce pollution. And the way they would do that is to take permits out of the market. How do you show that on the diagram? Well, you can shift the supply curve to the left. Shifting it to the left 
Still perfectly inelastic because the government sets the supply, right? But now less. Okay, so what you might want to show is from Q star to maybe Q2, all right? Or from Q star to Q star 2 or whatever you want to call it, all right? You might want to show that as well if this scheme is successful. And at the same time, you'll see a higher price. If there are less permits out there in the market, you'll see a higher price, assuming that we are still on D2 here, all right? So there are different ways to do it, but these two shifts here want to show what may happen if demand is too high. Well, again, the price would go up, rationing the excess demand um, and changing the incentives in the market. That's one thing you can show. The second thing you can show is what the government may do if the scheme is really successful, and that is reduce the number of permits. So this is a very powerful diagram. And if we go out to our checklist, let's just make sure the basics are done well, how we label our axis. Yes, we have, and we've applied them to show the examiner that we're in the market for permits here. So that's nicely done. We've labeled our curves, our supply and demand curves labeled. Have we labeled our equilibria? Yes, we have. All the various equilibria have been labeled correctly here. That's very, very important here. Have we labeled our socially optimum quantity? Yeah, Q star. That's the most important one because when the scheme is first implemented, whatever the cap the government sets should be the socially optimum quantity. And we're making that point clear as making the assumption, of course, that the government has got perfect information. Fine, I've critiqued that in my uh, general video on tradable pollution permits. We've also done number five, which I think is a useful thing to have in your head, or in your mental checklist, to show in your analysis and to show on the diagram that when market conditions change, incentives change, uh, the way in which the market operates changes, of course. All right? So we've done that as well very clearly by shifting our curves, demand curve and supply curve. That's it for tradable pollution permits. Worth learning this diagram and understanding how to use it. The previous video on tradable pollution permits is very helpful in giving you the wider detail behind it as well. But that's how to draw it and how to use it. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.